Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, let me uh, just say that, uh, of course, what we once thought of as criminal, uh, we certainly no longer do. Rod Campbell talked about the change over a period of time. Uh, one of my interests is uh, genealogy. And if I go back some 250 years ago to a parish record that I read, um, a poor Wayne to this day is still burdened with the description that is in the uh, parish record. It says the Wayne was conceived in antinuptial fornication because that was thought to be a high criminal offence. She'll never be rehabilitated because no mechanism if existed for that to happen. Thankfully, today we have a, a different environment. Let me just start by laying out rather didactically a sort of scheme. Uh, what is a good scheme uh, for rehabilitation? It's one that can be understood by the offender in the long term. It's one that can be understood and operated by employers and it's one that can command general public understanding and broad if not necessarily universal uh, support. Good decisions are obviously objective, they're proportionate and they encourage positive re-engagement of offenders with society. Good penalties protect society, they're cost effective and they minimise the damage to the innocent. Mary Fee made reference in particular uh, to that, protecting families from unduly bearing the cost of offending uh, relatives. Now, in my constituency, we've had Peterhead Prison. It opened in 1888, the same year that Celtic Football Club was founded. I don't think that's necessarily a coincidence. Um, and many of my constituents have uh, worked in the criminal justice system to very good effect indeed. Uh, we ended up, uh, as a result of a collaboration between uh, the then Justice Minister, uh, James uh, Douglas Hume, uh, and uh, Alex Salmond, who was then the MP, with Peterhead moving from being the hard man's prison uh, to being Scotland's serious sex offender's prison. And it's worth uh, quoting what was said to the Justice Committee in 2001 when it was being contemplated closing that prison about the achievements of my constituents in that prison. Uh, since the uh, programme commenced in 1993, the programme of rehabilitation, 244 participants. Um, 162 of the prisoners participating have been liberated, 69 still in custody. 173 completed the programme, 71 failed to finish it. Six have been reconvicted of a sexual offence and four have been recalled because of a breach of licence conditions. Now, that's a pretty impressive record for a very specialist form of rehabilitation, I absolutely accept, and for a crime which it is much more difficult to detect reoffending in. But nonetheless, it can give us some insight into the value uh, of uh, rehabilitation. Now, how do the staff who worked in Peterhead Prison dealing with these very difficult prisoners, the serious sex offenders sentenced to four years and above, uh, feel about working in the establishment. Uh, at the time, there was a threat to close it. Uh, one officer uh, said he'd been there for 12 years. He'd been through its troubled times with hostage taking and prisoner unrest. He survived that, carried out his duties. Not ideal day-to-day -day employment, but we persevered and eventually the prison, after some uh, adjustment, became the centre of excellence for the treatment of sex offenders, now regarded as one of the top three prisons in the world uh, in this field. The prisoners there classified as long-term vulnerable and who, if returned to the mainstream prison, uh, would revert into their shells and we would see the excellent work that was being done uh, spent for nothing. So, in my constituency, I have something that's economic value, maybe £15 million pounds a year uh, to the local economy, but it's something that has delivered value, as prisons across Scotland do and elsewhere, uh, when they tackle 
the difficult people in our society and offer uh, rehabilitation. Now, of course, we talked about families. Mary Fee made reference to it. Uh, one of the things in the serious sex offenders prison, of course, was that very few of the offenders did receive visits because in many cases the offences were committed against their families. Uh, so there are serious uh, difficulties that we need to engage with. Many really gifted people have engaged with the issue of sex offenders. The late Clive Fairweather, when he was Chief Inspector of Prisons, uh, very much a reformer, notwithstanding the fact that he came from the SAS, which you would not think was the natural breeding ground uh, for prison reformers, but I think it gave him terrific insight. Uh, and, and he particularly engaged with Peterhead Prison to huge uh, benefit. I want to highlight another minister, this time Richard Simpson, who at the time uh, there was a threat to close Peterhead Prison, uh, was a junior uh, justice minister in the then Scottish Executive. And Richard uh, made absolutely common cause with me as the constituency member uh, to try and address the issues around a crumbly Victorian institution which was still slopping out, did not meet modern standards, the physical environment made it difficult to run the kind of programmes that were going to uh, successfully rehabilitate prisoners. I will. Christine Graham. It's a long time ago, but I actually, I think, part chaired the Justice Committee during that period, and the Justice Committee also supported the specialist facilities at Peterhead and recognised its value. Stuart Stevenson. Indeed, and the Justice Committee, for example, conducted evidence sessions uh, across the wires to Canada, uh, I recall, and played a very significant and non-partisan uh, role uh, in saving uh, the prison. Um, I spent uh, 977 days working for Kenny McCaskill as the Shadow Deputy Justice Minister with responsibility for prisons and drug policy. Yes, I always know the number. Sorry about that. I just count things. Um, and I had the great uh, privilege to get involved in lots of interesting things. I met, when I was across uh, running some workshops, the Georgian Justice Minister in the Caucasus, for example, and talked to him about prison policy there. His proud achievement was, since coming into office, he'd halved the waiting time for the queue to get in to visit your relatives in prison. It was now only three days. So if we think that we are not doing as well as we might do uh, elsewhere, the challenges are somewhat uh, greater. I visited La Bapome prison, which is uh, north of Paris, to see how they treated sex offenders. And it was quite interesting how, how they did things. And it comes back to something Maureen Watt said. They had a manufacturing facility in there making switches for Peugeot cars. So people all over the world were driving Peugeots with products produced uh, by prisoners in La Bapome. In the women's part of the prison, they had a call centre not a dummy call centre, a call centre that was actually making calls outwards to people, training uh, the women in that prison for real life after prison in a very effective way. And they had a mother and baby unit in that prison. So in the women's wing, which was about 120 prisoners, they had no more than age two. They had some youngsters with their mothers there and did not, not half transform the atmosphere in the women's wing, because every woman in that wing was a mother to these four bairns uh, that were in there. There are many opportunities for doing things differently, helping, rehabilitating. Uh, Laba Palm also had a prison uh, kayaking team. The prisoners were participating in the national championships uh, shortly after I was there. Um, in Sochten, when I visited Sochten, I, I was in a cell with six murderers. Um, the prison staff were out of earshot. One of them complained to me that he'd been out on licence. He'd been recalled entirely unfairly, he thought, in his view, simply because he'd been present when another murder had taken place. Not every prisoner is going to be successfully re rehabilitated and understand uh, the requirements uh, that they have. Presiding officer, let me uh, conclude. Um, but just an observation, John Vine, when he was Chief Constable uh, of uh, Tayside, uh, said to me uh, that uh, offending behaviour in one part of your life likely indicates you will in another part. And it's always worth inquiring of people who park in uh, disabled parking spaces illegally. They're four times as likely as other people to commit other crimes. Um, 
John Finney and Graham Pearson touched on an issue I wanted to close on, and that was whether judges could take over some of this responsibility. And I think there's three headings. How long should somebody be in rehabilitation before their, their, their crime is spent? The judge can suggest that. He also should suggest the tests that have to be satisfied before their, uh, their crime is sought to be spent and perhaps the tasks that need to be completed successfully before they're complete. Because you can't see all the way into the future to see if rehabilitation will be successful. But I think judges have a key role that perhaps means we should legislate less prescriptively but empower judges to play a key role in this presiding office.